know that I can don't know how to play it. You know that I can. What happens to you? And I know that you can. For me too. I don't feel alone on the weight of the stone Now that I've found somewhere safe to bury my bone And any fool knows a dog needs a home was literally first go, no rehearsal, just listen to once the video of it, sound of it, and then tried to play. But that's pig that's part two of the song that I started yesterday's video with. It's like Pigs on the Wing Part Two by Pink Floyd. Waters wrote that. And I think I like it. It's just it's got this Pink Floyd thing of darkness, the weight of the stone, somewhere safe to bury my bone, any fool knows a dog needs a home, a shelter from pigs on the wing. But it's got this, I, you know that I care what happens to you, and I know what, that you care for me too. I mean, it's just very simple. How I play it again. You know that I can What happens to you? And I know that you can Oops For me too So that I don't feel alone Or the weight of the stone Now that I've found somewhere safe to bury my bone And any fool knows that a dog needs a home It goes a bit wrong, doesn't it? The best way to know songs, to perform them, is to memorize them, rehearse them a lot, but I don't, I don't have time. <laughs> I just have the leftover talents from when I used to know how to play guitar very well. I suppose I still do inside. these lyrics that I wrote, they're probably a bit chintzy, but I, was, I wrote them quite fast, it's just like the kind of poems that I usually write quite fast, sometimes I re revise them a few times before I publish them, and I haven't thought of any music for it. I usually like a bit of minor key, you know? what they call a modal tune.
now And it's the wake where we adjust It's the funeral for our own life We just keep on hoping that nothing's really changed Probably sound better if I tune up this guitar Storytelling, ballady. That's how you write. That's me writing the song, by the way. That music is just totally like chucking together A minor, E minor, a bit of C and D, and the occasional G chord. A minor and E minor. C and D. And G is a kind of resolving. But back to A minor and E minor and A minor. And then you kind of have the rhythm. melody 
kind of manifesting on top of it. And then you kind of just try to tell the story. And sometimes speaking is like trying to sing too much doesn't always make for a, a good song when you're really just trying to speak it. So my first line is so simplistic. I don't want to say all kinds of blamey stuff. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's actually me echoing what I, what was in the yesterdays, in the, in the song by Pink Floyd I was playing, you know, it gets to the sort of pinnacle of it and it's like, wondering which of the buggers to blame. That's why it's like just funny how you just think of a, you remember a song because it has you know you don't remember the lyrics until you look and then you know, oh this song has lyrics that are exactly what I'm thinking about it's like you do remember the lyrics but you in a subconscious way and I'm like what the flavor of all this media that like I was very relaxed yesterday when I played the perform for the video and made a little blues improv and stuff. The singing for that blues was terrible, I have to say, but if I do it every day, you'll, you'll see me improve, like, for sure. Um, occasionally there'll be a bad day and sometimes it'll be a good day or the key will be right, my voice will be weak or strong. But what I was thinking later when I was, I, 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 had, I had sort of laid off the media a little bit just to sort of adjusting to home life here and I was re watching and re the media was very horrendous that I, the whatever randomly came on my face Facebook timeline that linked me to New York Times Washington Post Guardian The Atlantic and various other the Sydney Morning Herald some Australian news media sometimes the television media there was like, the worst of it was just, someone was like, oh, I couldn't watch that Trump thing. So I was like, how much Trump can I watch? And there's like some one and a half hours of him talking with people standing by his side. Couldn't even watch five minutes of it. He was virtue signaling about how he saved someone from some country, like, as if he did it. We did it. All my power to billions of dollars worth of military to save someone so that I can have a token. I mean, that's great. Saving the good. It's like donating to charity. Good. Virtue signaling so that you can get validation. Not good. Narcissistic. And that's why people find it hard. It's like, I give money to charity, I'm awesome, aren't I, aren't I, aren't I, you know, and they're like, yes, I, I can't see you, no, you're good on you, mate, yeah, and I'm your teacher, I'll teach you, I'm better than you, you uh, don't talk to those bad people, all these things that they do to separate you off into a virtuous group where they control and blah, 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 and I'm not talking about Rick Purr, but might as well be, because that's where that comes from. <laughs> So, okay, if you're still here, are you still here? I was going to a little bit maybe use material that is not mine as talking points. I've got an email that I copied a Matthew Remsky, and he's, he's a great writer sometimes. Sometimes he's a bit uh, too intellectual. Not in a bad way for intellectual, but just the way he writes is a bit, um, I don't know, it just doesn't resonate. But sometimes it's the same as playing music or whatever. Sometimes he's 
he's in the right space at the right moment and the right emotional state and he's just like just it kind of reminded me a bit of the great writers like uh, of the beat poetry era not really poets word smithing and word twisting word bending and he's talking about a yoga studio guy from Bikram which is a known cult saying we're practicing together in a hot room both antiseptic and beneficial for the immune system and at a press conference with a you know chief medical officer in British Columbia and the, this doc doctor sort of managed to stay polite and professional and basically said that's fucking insane <laughs> and paraphrasing him because he didn't obviously say that's fucking insane but so you got to be very slow about this kind of health advice coming around not you sh you shouldn't just assume that if it comes from the mainstream media it's right and everything else is wrong but you shouldn't you should look for multiple sources in agreement from uh, not just because there are some authority because often authority has no qualification qualified authority actual like this person is a professor slash doctor slash healthcare whatever and they're in charge and they've said this and it's been tested and they're basing it on research or things that are happening so when you get some random the real way to survive the coronavirus is you know to heat up heat it up and kill it at 60 degrees celsius there's some video someone sent me and they're doing it as a friend like and they're not saying that it's right they're just saying oh this came on my radar and we looked at it and then before i'd even half watched it he'd already found the debunking thing for it there's a lot of things about if you eat and i believe this but now i don't see i i'm gonna say it, retract and i don't know if i would said it anywhere i just heard it and i was kind of thinking i might have said it to my family if you eat things that or drink them and the coronavirus goes in your stomach it dies apparently that's not necessarily true or not at all true and so food that has the coronavirus that you eat may actually but if it was but it is known that heat will kill it just like I mean that's why the body kills viruses but I've also read somewhere that bats have a particularly high blood temperature so if it does indeed come from bats it's like assumption on assumption does it even come from bats like you know I don't even know if that's true even though it's the the, the narrative or whatever and so because bats have a high blood temperature the virus can survive much higher temperatures in our body than so our fever doesn't we have we get a fever as an immune response which helps to kill pathogens, viruses, bacteria. I mean, if the if that if our immune system didn't work, then everyone that caught it would die, basically. It would just run rampant until you died. So whatever your immune system has to fight it, antibodies that, that it creates, white blood cells, many other things that I don't understand because I'm not qualified in immunology. Um, they obviously work, you know, that, um, but breathing hot air in like you're in a desert or having a super hot sauna may not be a good idea. And, and what is the, this guy was talking about? Yoga people practicing in a hot room together. So it's an antiseptic, maybe not. Beneficial for the immune system, maybe not. Maybe it's actually, you know, heat and cold both use up a lot of body energy 
maintaining your correct body temperature. So then neither is better than the other. If it gets hot, you, you don't feel well. If it gets too cold, you don't feel well. Use up a lot of, you know, that's in ignoring techniques that people have to maintain uh, the circulation and deal with heat and cold. I'm just saying generally. But there's a few there's a few bits here, like he just went off basically, Matthew Ramsky. Here's here's him being a bit more chill. I have something approaching faith that COVID-19 is exposing socio-economic viruses that a revolution in common sense will fight to vaccinate against. Folks won't be able to sell their wellness products or high demand groups in the same way anymore, with the same empty smile. Who in 2021 is going to give money to the wellness predator, whether they're selling magical yoga adjustments, yoni eggs, or essential oils? Uh -huh. I like essential oils. Matthew, but I'm not selling them as a wellness product. I'm just telling people that I like them, some of them. How can goop not evaporate like a neurotic dream? The only real question is how lawmakers or hackers can siphon the cash out of the goop tech gadget industry supply chain and redistribute it to people without health care. Who will be able to remain blind to the fact that this masturbatory economy has parasitized the attention of a culture that needs masks, ICU beds, ventilators, and UBI. And I don't know what UBI is. What is Google? What is UBI? Universal basic income. That's when they print money to give you money, but anyone that has savings loses money because they're accelerating inflation. But in socialism, you know, giving money to people to help them in times of need is kind of just what you do. And uh, this, if there's a time for socialism and universal health care, now is the time. So he was like listing out in his in his like post all the different things that he was seeing. As an act of faith, this is him. I'm, I'm reading him. As an act of faith, I'm going to imagine that the excesses of neoliberalism are now openly consuming themselves, and that engaging with, mocking, or cheering on that self-destruction is a waste of resources. I think this may free up, free me up to be more clear and responsive. I can't be thinking of the do terra yoga goofball when I need, in this moment, for there is no other, to connect with the growing confusion and sorrow of my seven-year-old realizing in his body what is happening. So, that realizing in your body, this is a lot of what anxiety is about. You start to manifest tension, you get less sleep because you think things that wake, keep you awake, stop you from going to sleep and then wake you up during the night. You, know, you, you, have, you might have like screen addiction, so even after three or four hours of sleep, you need to know, so you wake up and look at your phone or your whatever screen. And then at some point, all the blood rushes out of you as you get into sort of states of high anxiety and panic attack, maybe. And so even a young person who hasn't developed a really anxiety-based system feels that things aren't right, just like uh, a victim of abuse starts to become ill as a sort of self-defense mechanism to pull themselves out of the system of abuse. They need time away from it so they become ill as a sort of an immune response, like 
you're in a dangerous environment and I'm pulling you out by slowing you up with lack of energy, lack of psychology, psychological will, whatever it is, your, your system feels it and slows you down and, um, I mean, there's no abuser that we're talking about here, but maybe the media is abusing our uh, desire to know what's going on with hype and uh, just any stories that they can get out because they're all like wanting to stay relevant and stay open as a business and get subscribers. And uh, every business is, is scared. My friend and I have a business with few or no clients at the moment, and so we have to work at it. And I have to write something for the business about what we can offer. But I'm a little bit at a loss, you know? I don't want to write without research and clarity. I guess that's what my song is about. It's like you're on a boat. There's this song, there's this sort of a album by Split Ends that most of the songs have seafaring metaphors and I guess some of that's leaked its way into my songwriting and I started to sort of say, the winds of change are here and I'm scared but I'll sail away to whatever weather must be weathered. So let's just, let's just, let's just raise the sails. The winds of change are here again, so let's just raise the sails. So what I'm saying is we're on the boat and we have to cross to the other shore of future, the future of, and that means that the in between where we are now, which is going on a journey, or the changes in, are happening for the journey, like closing down borders, shutting down restaurants apart from home delivery. By the way, my family are making home delivery like a restaurant, not running a restaurant. So we're doing what we think is legal. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't scam me and I don't really control them that's what they've decided to do they need money they lost their jobs temporarily so so we're sailing across the waters which are the unknown basically going to sea was very much of an unknown for many people and raising the sails means like let's get on with it let's just raise the sails And also, being on a boat is isolating. You know, you're in. A, you can't go out of the boat. The, the house here is like a boat. Boats are small quarters. You, you've got the deck, and there is a social thing. If it's a big boat, there's people. There's the galley eating together. It's not like that, but, but the journey and the isolation from the rest of the land-loving world. Sorry about that. Nervously tapping my guitar here. Okay. 
Okay, so that's it for today. It's half an hour's gone. Goodbye. Thanks for coming to the COVID Blues, day four. Mm -hmm.